Now, some time ago, I purchased a Radio Code 101 to uh, get involved in a project with. And uh, that project took several years because of COVID-19 and all the rest. In the meantime, Radio Code have uh, upgraded to a newer model. And they were graceful enough to send me a 103. So, I'm going to go out in the field, do a bit of stuff with a 103. Very similar, very much the same. Um, but a big difference in price, and apparently there's a whole bunch of new features and um, sensitivity specifically. One of the main reasons I wanted this is for a particular project that I've had going for a couple of years. So let's talk about the project. There's an area near me that is contaminated with radiation. I'm not sure if it's naturally occurring radiation or if it's uh, man-made or a combination of both. There's been a radiation, an aerial radioactive survey that showed a whole bunch of different things in the area. And I tried chasing the government body responsible for that. And uh, they've done things that I interpret as evasive. So uh, there are rumors that uh, the area was used to dispose of military waste equipment, that uh, some of which may have been involved in the new Maralinga nuclear tests. It also used to be an old quarry. And so it could potentially be naturally occurring thorium, which also occurs with gravel mines. And there's some evidence to that that I can interpret from the data that I've got. Either way, I needed something that could scan the area and confirm those readings. Now, at the time, all I had was this little Radax Geiger counter. And it uses a basically a variation of an SBM20 uh, Geiger tube in here, which I have one I can show you. In here is a Russian SBM20 Geiger tube. This one is broken. Um, these are basically a protected glass tube, so some of these don't have the brass on them. Basically, when one of these is charged up to a high enough voltage and a radioactive particle goes straight through this, it ionizes it, hence ionizing radiation, makes it conductive for a brief moment, and uh, the counter can go bleep and make a little beep. You'll hear a bit of cosmic radiation cause the beep going on there. Some of these it represents as a click, and I have one in the background here that does the same thing that uses exactly one of these tubes right in there. The problem with a Geiger tube is that all you can tell is that things are radioactive, not what kind of radiation they are. So then there was this thing that I made, which was a uh, GPS logging Geiger counter. So it's got a Raspberry Pi Zero, a monitor and a Geiger counter and a bit of programming that links it all together with the GPS data to give me counts per minute attached to a CSV file. And I was able to import that into Google Earth and map the area. But I still couldn't tell exactly what was radioactive, all I knew that it was radioactive. So after a great deal of research, I came across the Radio Code 101, which seemed to be a uh, new iteration of a product from a company called Radio Code. This worked very well. This uses scintillation rather than a, ge a Geiger tube. Now inside these, there's a little cube, roughly a centimetre square, somewhere behind that. In the link in below, there is a uh, video that shows somebody actually dismantling them. that gives you a good idea of exactly what's in there. What I was able to procure, and I had to ship this from the USA, is a Lyso um, scintillation crystal. Now this is a special crystal also used in scintillation counters that would give a little blue flash every time a particle goes through it. Now, the intensity with which that little flash occurs gives you an idea of exactly what the energy is of a particular particle going through. So from that, over time, you can count that and come up with a spectrum and give a reasonably good estimate of exactly what kind of material is down there. Let's chuck this under the X-ray machine and show you what I mean when you hit it with a whole bunch of X-rays. We have an old animal X-ray machine here. I've got a few lead bricks and a lead plate to try and deal with the backscatter. Now, previously, I've run this conservatively at 15 milliamps. We're going to dial it up to 30 milliamps today. All right, we're underneath the X-ray machine here. We're going to turn off our focusing light. You can see the blue glow from the tritium tube because there's a bit of tritium gas. And off to the left of that is the Lyso crystal. Let's turn off our main lights and uh, expose it. Now with that out of the way, it's time to get on the road and to uh, go and scan the area. 
I have been out there very recently with the 101 and I got a small spectrum on it but I didn't stay there for very long and I didn't have a real good idea of my exposure. So we're going to take both of these out. We're going to take two phones. With the assistance of a phone we're going to map the area and I may even be able to do some screen recordings and show you the process of mapping this on GPS real time. Let's get going. So I'm on my way out to uh, do the surveys and uh, had to pull up with somebody on the side of the road. I got a bad batch of diesel with a bit of water in it. I had to still pull up and see if I could help him out. But uh, RSCB just showed up, so we're going to take off. Uh, it's a day for roadworks by the look of it. I wonder what they're doing up here. property we've got a little bit to go and uh, every time I come through here these cattle seem to think they're going to get fed or something so I'm going to have a bit of a challenge on this second gate. So I'm fortunate today that uh, the gate is open we don't have to worry about that. So this area once upon a time used to be a gravel mine and you can sort of see some evidence of it here. <coughs> so uh, anyway let's pull up here because uh, safe enough to get a baseline and set up our equipment and uh, we'll move on from here. Alright so I'm out in the field and I've got two phones and two of these. Now that's the 101. We're going to fire you up. We're going to take the old one on my new phone and we're going to take the old phone with the new one. So the 103G is going to get out and do a spectrum and I'm going to use my 101 to do the GPS logging. We're going to go to devices we can't use two devices at the same time. Um, so that's a ready code 103. It should connect to that. And we are going to restart accumulation and clear that. We've still got our baseline on there. This one, we're going to fire you up. I'm going to go to radio code on this one. Um, go to radio code app here. Go to devices. Check for Bluetooth, the 101. Okay, we're going to do that. Now, this one is going to need to go over to decimeter mode. Keep track of my dose. And we are also going to go spectrum and reset the accumulation on this one as well. All right, so we're reading about 0.1 micro sieverts per hour here. On average in this area, it's about 0.5. Now, <laughs> Now you notice we've just hit a high level. We've just got a bit closer. Uh, it'll go up probably a little bit more after this. So this is probably about one of the highest spots. I'm going to leave that phone there. And I'm going to make sure I have a good reference point. We are directly in line with the vehicle. It gives me a reference point. I really should flag this somehow. I'm not sure how, but I'll find it. I'll hear it. So, phone is sitting there, doing a spectrum. Let's go for a wander with this. Do some GPS logging. We're going to go to the software here. If I can unlock it. We're going to go to map. And you have to tell it to start logging the map. Okay. We're going to go for a walk. Now, I haven't been out through this way before. I'd like to be using a nice square search grid over here, but uh, can't fly a drone. We're on the uh, fringes of military airspace. They uh, have had a chat to me in the past. Might just cut across here. It's going to get windy. Now the train's going to get a bit rough here. But I might be able to follow where the kangaroos have been jumping. Well, I just nearly walked over the top of a kangaroo and it's joey. <laughs> They're not quite sure what to think of me. Not sure what happened to the GoPro or why it stopped recording. Now I want to follow in along this tree line. See what it's like along here. Okay, so I came past the spot that I thought was a hot spot here and we are seeing higher than average by a little bit. 
I'm about to cut across over here. Alright, it's just warned me of a much higher than usual level uh, as I've come in. Uh, where are we? Pause that alarm. So this was an area I thought might be a hot spot. And I was right. So at least these hypotheses are proving to be correct. As for the rest of it, it's still undecided. Right now, just by dead reckoning with my memory, should be coming up somewhere on where I left the 103. Military navigation was something I was good at. It appears it hasn't failed me. I was dead on track. On the correct vector. Alright. Still going. 35. 1.35 micro sieverts. Alright, we're going to take a vehicle survey. And uh, off to the side I have the 103 taped to my mirror. And I'm using my old phone for this so the camera has had some water in it. It looks a little bit subpar. The new one is doing mapping and I'm using the 101 as my general decimeter. Okay, so let's go and see if we can work out some of the other areas I was curious about. There was an aerial survey out here some time ago. And out this direction was uh, where I remember. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, it's, uh, this is where I thought there was a hot spot following. So we are sort of confirming that. Okay, we're back on the road now. Oh, the road's okay. But off to that side, it was a little bit high. So um, I am curious back in this direction what goes on. Somebody's been woodcutting out here. So I guess that is their property and their choice. Okay, well this is about the boundary of where I've got permission to be. So we will be turning away from that and going off-road a little bit. Again, I'd like to be doing nice clean... Oh, we've got a couple of green dots. I'd like to be doing nice, green, uh, clear, square grid patterns with the terrain and the limitations behind using a drone just aren't possible. All right, well, we might just scoot through this gate. I think we've got plenty of data now. And I'll save a second spectrum before we take off and um, go from there. I spy bunny rabbits. I wonder if you'd let me out here to go shoot. And it doesn't matter where you go, there's always road works. Now, this survived reasonably well hanging off the windscreen, I didn't, or hanging off the rearview mirror. I didn't manage to um, wipe it out on anything we did well. I drove reasonably carefully, I didn't go through puddles. That's alright, although I would recommend making that waterproof if you put it outside on a rainy day. Um, I've got some gear to bring in, so uh, we'll do that. Alright, so I'm home, I'm back at the desk, things are still clicking. We've got a lot of footage to download and a lot of maths to do. And we'll be back with a conclusion. Um, now, this was the the 103 has taken a total exposure of 0.06 since we left. My total personal dose for the day is 0.17 micro sieverts. Not much at all. Um, it's about three or four days of walking around town around here with the normal background. So um, yeah, let's get downloading and see what we come up. All righty, this is a momentous moment. It's taken us about four or five years to arrive at this point. So um, here we go. I've had to get ChatGPT to weigh in on this um, inaccuracy and all, uh, as well as um, I did post to the Radio Code Reddit and uh, no responses yet. But anyway, it looks like we have a combination of um, naturally occurring and potentially man-made stuff here. So right down on the, the low energy end here, we're looking at like 77 kV or 68. So this is sort of looking like um, Amarism 241. Now, keep in mind there is often a little bit of inaccuracy with this, although the 103 is pretty bang on. It's calibrated pretty well out of the box. 
So if this is Amarisim 241, it does sort of suggest man-made stuff. Although X-rays are down this end of the world, and you do get a lot of background X-rays, as you can see from the green baseline that's normally in here. Um, so there might be a bit of iodine down here or europium, but uh, yeah, it looks mostly like we're americium. If we go to this other little bump here, which is pretty out of the ordinary, um, we've got, I think that's iodine there or europium. Not sure what sort of decay chain we're in that, probably the radium decay chain, radium 226. There we go. That's the radium decay chain. And we look at all these red bars up here, which sort of correspond loosely with some of the other bumps we've got. Um, so we could be talking like radon gas or maybe um, if we've got granite down there, we might have a little bit of uranium in there. Um, so this is bismuth, I think. I've got to remember my periodic table. I had to actually check my kid's periodic table on the wall to decipher some of this. Cobalt 60 is what you'd sort of see with man-made stuff. Um, now, there was a big um, bunch of fallout that got into the um, jet streams. In the jet streams, there was some contamination fallout got into the jet streams in the late 80s, and a lot of that fell out here. And some of it came in the form of potassium, but mostly cesium and cobalt. So cesium-137, which I think is down here somewhere. There was a cesium spike here. Cesium-137 is about here, which is, you know, a bit more above the background. In fact, this whole spectrum along here is just generally higher than the background. But it does look kind of noisy, kind of dirty, which is what you get with naturally occurring radioactive material. I have had a little bit of dealing with that um, in oil field stuff, where a lot of the sands and junk that comes up out of uh, crude oil wells often has radioactive byproducts in there as well and uh, somewhere around here there is actually a big yard full of radioact or radioactive contaminated um, bits and pieces like pipes and stuff that come off there there is a thing called targeted tees that build up sediment to help uh, stop the wearing in the back of an elbow and they often accumulate the heaviest materials which are often radioactive isotopes so anyway still not sure what to make with this I think that maybe we have man-made and also um, naturally occurring stuff, but it's more likely we're looking at a bit of radon gas, a bit of naturally occurring uranium, and um, yeah, so maybe some just other bits and pieces. The americium, this end here has got me interested, whether it's just background x-rays or whether it's something along those lines there. Some of you guys are going to be far more expert than me, so you guys, welcome to weigh in in the comments. But yeah, interesting stuff. I'm going to call it quits here. I'm trying not to make this video too long. So, hope you had fun. Um, discuss away in the comments.